Hello everyone, this is Paula from cropnotesandcrafts.blogspot.com and I'm here today to talk about uh, rubber stamps that are not mounted onto wood and to give you some idea of what some of your choices are and some different ways that you can purchase those stamps. Um, space is definitely an issue for me, so um, whenever I can I buy my stamps that are either uh, uh, unmounted on foam or just plain rubber. And let's talk about that. Okay, this stamp set came from Our Daily Bread Designs, and I like their packaging, um, the way they do their sets, and I usually store their sets together in one place uh, in the, the box that they come into. And these are rubber stamps um, that are mounted onto cling foam. I already have the foam attached, and all that I need to do is put that foam onto my acrylic block and I'm ready to stamp. So that's one way that they come. And these are already stored on um, a piece of plastic. Now the other thing that I like to do is to um, store some of my clear stamps uh, in a photo box. And what I do is I stamp the image onto a card that fits the photo box and then I mount those stamps onto the acetate and then I store them this way so that it's easy to see and I can just leaf through the box and um, they're categorized. These are Anna Griffin stamps. Um, now with the rubber you can also buy uh, rubber that is um, unmounted and you can either purchase cling foam and mount those onto the cling foam or you can uh, just stamp with the rubber so let me show you what that's about this is the way one way that I store some of mine um, I'll either store them in um, shoebox style like I did with the I showed you with the acetate um, and the clear stamps or I'll put them into a plastic CD case this way um, and uh, I, space is definitely a, a, an issue so what I had done is I had stamped the images so that they were on the front and you could see what was in the box and then you could open it up uh, and then there would be the stamps so now what I've done is use both sides of the of the case and then I can stamp the image um, on a piece of cardstock and actually put that um, piece of cardstock in the center so that's another way um, and then I also have some of these um, metal uh, DVD tins and if the stamps were on the acetate I could also store them this way and put several sets in one tin. And I have plenty of these tins if anybody needs any you can contact me. Okay, now on the unmounted rubber, um, when you know, I usually don't use the cling foam because I like to uh, do brayer work. And when you do brayer work, if you want um, one of the two of the keys to, to good brayer work is uh, the kind of uh, cardstock that you're working on. It needs to be an ultra smooth type of cardstock, and to use um, a foam pad um, beneath where you're doing your brayer work. And so this is my foam pad. Um, it is manufactured by Darius, and it's called a rum rubber stamp pad. Now this is just like um, uh, a fun foam. So if you can't find this, and you can find the thick sheets of fun foam, then you could use those also. Um, probably if you took three of the extra thick pieces of fun foam, um, that they're now making that would be about what this this pad would be. Now I also um, will save packaging anytime um, this this plastic packaging um, when there's a piece of it that I could use to store stamps on I save this and then I cut it down to the size that I need you know this will fit into my shoe box or my photo box and store my stamps on that. Okay, now when I order rubber stamps, 
and I don't mount them, which is most of the time, um, I usually don't, don't mount them onto foam. Uh, so when they come, you know, like this one just arrived, there's a little extra rubber on here that I don't want, so I would um, go around this piece with uh, a pair of scissors that cut rubber well, and what you're looking for is that short um, cutting blade with this big D type handle uh, and a pair, of, you know, make sure that they're sharp. So, what I do is I would go around and I would trim my rubber and I would try and get it close without cutting into the image. Uh, some stamps will already come trimmed. Uh, these were already trimmed, but I'm you know, going to trim a little bit more because if ink were to get on this edge, uh, it would mess up the image that I'm trying to stamp. And since I don't want to waste time and take that chance, I go ahead and prep these a little bit further and take a little bit more of the rubber off. Okay, this is a stamp that I already have prepped and ready to go uh, that I've trimmed down some more. And uh, one of the things that I like to do is write uh, the name of the stamp, the stock number, the company that I purchased it from, and the price that I paid for it. Um, just to have a reference, because when I, I blog about it, I can just look at the back of the stamp, and uh, it's easy for me to find the information to give to you when I uh, make a blog posting. Uh, now, if you decide that you're going to write on the back of your stamp with the information, one thing that you do not want to do or that you want to be careful about is if you use uh, a stays-on uh, cleaner for your ink, because most of the time I'm stamping, a lot of times I'm stamping these images with stays-on ink, you want to make sure that you uh, maybe use the um, Simple Green uh, stamp cleaner, you know, the one that you can make, and not use the stays on cleaner because it will actually uh, eat into the tackiness that we're about to put on the back of this uh, and it will mess, mess your stamp up and take your ink and everything off too. So be careful about that if you decide to write on it. Um, okay, now once I have my information on there, I take um, a Tacket glue, and this is Aileen's Tacket over and over. Um, this is what I used to make the glue dots with. I already had the, um, I already had this glue, so you know why not make glue dots with it also? So all I do is put this on the back of my stamp, and you can take if you're doing a lot or some large images, a foam brush works well. Uh, I have the small image, so I'm just going to use a standard paintbrush. You want to make sure that you wash your brush out immediately after using it. I just dampen that just a little bit, and I'm going to spread this on to. And there is some some mold release on this this rubber, so it may start to separate. The glue may start to separate and pull away from the edges. And if it does, then you know I'll go back and put another coat on this. Uh, you can speed the drying with your heat tool, but you need to be really careful with that um, and not get too close with it. So I'm going to put that on there, let that dry, I'll come back to it and probably put a second coat on there. And once that is on there and dry, um, it'll dry shiny. Remember it looks like a glue dot and it's very tacky. So you need to store this onto uh, some type of plastic and that tackiness you can just put your rubber right down onto your block and you're ready to stamp with it and it peels off really easily also so um, that's a little tip for you and you know some people say well I don't, I don't like to, to stamp this way because I don't get a good image well if you use that foam beneath that foam pad like uh, I talked about that will give you uh, all the cushion that you need to be able to use your rubber stamps this way and bypass using the foam mount. So I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, just ask and I'll talk to you later.